Hello friends, in this video tutorial, let us see DEX queries in tubular model for SSAS. So for the purpose of this video tutorial, let us go to our SSAS 2012 database which we had used in one of our earlier video tutorials. As in this video, in this database, we had developed two databases, okay. In SSAS 2012 instance, we had developed two databases that is tubular project 1 and tubular project 2. So let us go to tubular project 2. In this, there is internet sales uh, table, then there is DIM customer, DIM date and DIM products table. Now with the help of this particular database that is tubular 2 project, uh, tubular project 2 database, let us understand some of the basic DAX queries. Okay. Now this particular session on DX queries is not a very detailed one. It is an overview of DX queries in tubular model, but we will try to cover uh, a lot of syntax. Okay. So let us go through the first query. So the basic statement as we have in SQL, we have select statement and similarly in DX we have evaluate. So which means right now there is a dimension called dim customer. So if you want to see all the data of dim customer, what we can see is we can write evaluate dim customer in single quotes. Table names are written in single quotes. Okay. So if we write this, we'll get the data of dim customers. Okay. Now we can see over here that the first column is customer key and it is not arranged in any particular order. Okay. So what if we want to order by this customer key, then we can have order by clause. Okay, as we had order by clause in SQL, similarly we have order by clause in DAX. So let's say we want to order by customer key and then the name. Okay, so let's execute this and we can see that the customers have been ordered by customer ID. Okay, and then actually there is not much meaning in ordering by first name, but just uh, as a matter of syntax, I have written it. Okay. Now let us say that this is the customer key. What if we want to start our records from here? So we don't want these records to be displayed zero to six records. That is, that is this first seven records. If we don't want to display, and if we want to start for the eighth record, that is we want to start from zero zero seven. Then that can also be done. Okay. This is typically. Uh, required in case of reporting. Okay, so if you want to start our report from here, we can do that. And for that, there is a start at clause. So if you execute this query, all the data will be displayed starting from 007. So the first six records will be skipped. Okay, so this is about the basic evaluate statement with order by and start by clause. Okay, sorry, start at clause. Okay. Now let us go to the second thing that is filter. Okay. Now up to here in this first example, we have not used any functions. In the second example for filter, we will use the function. Okay. Filter is a function. It is like a where clause in SQL. Okay. So with the help of this filter function, we can filter the data. Okay. So this is evaluate. Then what do we want to evaluate? Which, which table data we want? We want internal sales data. Now for internet sales, we are putting two filters. The first level filter will filter all the records where SIP date key is less than due date key. Okay. So let's go to internet sales. Okay. So we want records where SIP date key is less than due date key. Okay. And so this ends the first level filter. Okay. Right. And it is returning us a kind of tubular data. So that can be used for further filtering. So we put a comma and then in the second part for that is for the second filter, we will filter as internet sales unit price greater than 10. So you can see over here, oh, let us execute. Okay. So we can see over here that only that data is displayed for which the unit price that is this column is having value greater than 10. Okay. And where SIP date key is greater is less than due date key. 
So in this way we can apply multiple levels of filter function in a single evaluate clause, in a single evaluate, evaluate statement. Okay. Okay. So now let's go to the third syntax that is calculate table. Now cal calculate table is similar to calculate. Calculate returns a single column whereas calculate table returns a tabular data. Okay. So first we have to write evaluate then what do we want to evaluate? We want to evaluate internet sales. Okay. So we want data from this particular table internet sales table. Now how do we want to calculate the table? So what is it's also kind of where clause okay but calculate table is generally speaking it is faster than filter okay and we'll see one more thing add columns it is still faster than calculate table okay now uh, over here what is the where clause that we want to introduce with the help of calculate table or what is the kind of filtering that we want we want those data for which sales amount in the internet sales table that is sales amount in the internet sales table okay is greater than 50 okay and we want to do ordering by and order by product key okay so we want ordering to be done by the first column of internet sales that is product key so let us execute up to here first of all okay so we can see that only those sales amounts are displayed for which the amount is greater than 50 so let's go to sales amount column right this is the column so only those sales amounts are displayed for which the sales amount is greater than 50 okay now but over here it is not ordered in any particular manner right so this is the first column so let us order it by first column so let us order by order key so let us execute and we can see that that only that data is displayed for which the sales amount is greater than 50 and also the order is ordering is done by also the ordering is done as per the product key okay okay now evaluate add columns okay so now what does add columns mean let us see with the help of this example first of all there is evaluate statement and what do we want to evaluate we want to evaluate internet sales so we will definitely get the data of all the columns from this particular table that is internet sales table right now add columns will add a dynamically calculated column okay to the display right so what do we want to add so we specified with the help of comma and we are naming this we are providing this alias name okay we are naming this column as profit margin percentage then we put a comma and then we provide the and then we provide the formula for this particular column for auto calculation right so what do we want in this particular column so this column will be displayed at towards the end okay and what do we want we want to divide sales amount minus product cost total product cost divided by total product cost so total product cost is present sales amount is present so it will give us the margin and the total margin will be divided by the total product cost so it will give the profit margin percentage so let us evaluate let us execute so we can see that we are able to see all the columns of internet sales table but we have an additional column towards the end and the name of the column is profit margin percentage okay and it has been calculated based on this particular formula okay so now let us go to another statement that is summarize summarize statement in dax is similar to group by statement in sql so first of all we have we are writing evaluate and then what do we want to evaluate we want to evaluate internet sales that is we will get data from this table now we want to do group by so first of all we will provide the group by column name so we will group by order date key okay so we will group by this particular column and what is the aggregate function that you want to use for this particular grouping so for that we will introduce a new column called sales amount and in that we will put this sum function that is sum of sales amount from the internal sales table okay so let us execute this so we can see that 
we have distinct order date keys over here and what is the sum of the internet sales amount for this particular order date keys is displayed as the second column and the title of the second column is sales amount right which we have specified in double quotes right okay so let us see one more uh, next syntax and that is cross join cross join is like producing the cartesian product between the distinct possible combinations within a column so in this case for let us understand first of all this much cross join distinct dim product color let us go to dim product okay so color will have some distinct values right similarly size will have some distinct values so what we are saying is take all distinct values of color take all distinct values of size and pour, and create a cartesian product out of it which means all combinations of color or every value of color will be repeated for all combinations of size okay so in this way a cartesian product will be prepared now this cartesian product is like a table right this data will be similar to a table so that we can give in add columns okay as the first argument of the add columns right so this is the table and we are saying add columns now with a comma and in the second argument we'll add a dynamic column so what do we want to add dim product count rows related table is this table uh okay dim product okay so which means for this dim product which is the related table for this cross join table right count the related tables rows okay and that display as dim product so let us see the output so we can see over here that there is first of all a cartesian product in the first two columns we can see that there is a cartesian product which means all combinations will be shown even if for red and 70 let's say white and 70 blue and 70 there are no products right still those combinations will be shown but over here there will be null values okay right but for all the values or all the combinations for which there is a value existing in the products table that value will be shown that is count of those records will be shown okay in the third column which is a calculated column we added with the help of add columns and the count is and the formula is count rows okay for the related table and now this is the last syntax that we want to see now this uh, if we look at this last syntax then it will cover most of the basic syntax that is there in the dx dx is a is a vast language like any other language so it will have many different functions and all but this covers the uh, main main syntax that is present in as part of the dx for tabular models okay now let us use define measure okay so it is similar to mdx in mdx also we can define a new measure runtime measure which can be used further in the query right over here also in dx also we can define measure runtime measure with the statement define measure okay so what are we defining over here we are defining total sales as the name of the new measure which will be present this measure will be present inside internet sales table okay and just for this query okay and then what we are uh, using we are using sum of the total sales amount okay in this new column so with the help of then we can use the evaluation statement just like select statement right and then we are adding a column so we need all columns of internet sales plus this newly added column okay that is total sales and name of the columns are written in double quotes okay whereas name of the tables are always written in single quotes so you can see that the name of the column is present in double quotes and then we are providing with the help of a comma we are providing the the exact formula for the for this particular column and formula is nothing but this newly calculated measure which is uh, total sales the name of the name is total sales right so let us execute this okay and now we are not doing proper aggregation over here so it will all it uh, this particular value total sales will give the same values as there in the in the sales okay so we can see the sales amount is matching with the total sales amounts okay but in this way i just use this example to show the syntax part that is in this way you can use define measure to dynamically introduce a runtime calculated measure into your query okay so now 
for this video tutorial this will be the last syntax that we are seeing okay uh, that is define measure and this tutorial video tutorial is not comprehensive for dx queries for tubular but it gives a fairly good idea about the uh, the kind of the, or the different syntax is present for dx in tubular model so i hope friends this video tutorial is useful to you thank you